Welcome to this course on object-oriented programming in Python versus Java. If you're a Java programmer wanting to know how object-oriented programming works in Python, you're in the right place. In this course, we will compare class definitions in Java and Python, look at fields, methods, inheritance, and more. Python handles object-oriented programming in a different way than Java does. We'll be exploring those differences as we build a functional class in Python. In this course, you will build and compare a simple class in both Java and Python. Explore object and class attributes in Python. Learn about writing functions separate from any class or object. Discover inheritance and polymorphism mechanisms in Python. Learn how an object can discover information about itself in Python. And finally, build a complete Python class applying all that you have learned. In our first lesson, we will compare a simple class written in both Java and Python. Welcome to lesson one of object-oriented programming in Python versus Java. In this lesson, we will look at a simple class written in both Java and in Python. The Java class is going to be in a file called car.java, and it will have the typical organization of a Java class with its fields, constructor, and some get methods. So here we have a class car. We define three fields, the color, model, and its year. We have a constructor assigning values to each of those fields and some typical get methods to obtain the values of those fields. Python classes, you'll notice, are going to be a lot smaller. There's no requirement that the file name match the class name, nor that there be only one class in a particular Python file. All of our attributes are defined in what's called an init method. And so comparing our Java class to our Python class, we define class car, and then we have our init method, which is similar to a constructor. Behind the scenes, they're not really the same, but if you want to view writing a Java constructor, it would go into this dunder method, a method that begins and ends with two underscores is referred to as a dunder method called init. We don't have to declare the fields ahead of time. The fields are defined when we assign them a value. So when we say self.color equals color, that defines the field color. Similarly, this statement defines the field model, and this statement defines the field year. In the remainder of this course, we will dig deeper into these differences, why it's so much smaller, why we're missing things like public and private. But the first thing we're going to be taking a look at will be the declaration and initialization of fields. And that will be in your next lesson. In this lesson, we'll start looking at more specific details, starting with declaration and initialization. In Java, fields are typically declared at the top of the class, then initialized in a constructor. So here we have our class car, and we have defined three fields, the color, the model, and the year of the car. There's our declaration. Those fields are then initialized in the constructor. The constructor takes three parameters, car, model, and year. And since we've used the same names as the names of our fields, we have to use the word this when referring to the field to prevent the ambiguity. So we say this.color equals color, this.model equals model, this.year equals year. In Python, the declaration and initialization happen simultaneously in an init method. An init method is similar to Java's constructor as a programmer. What you would put in a Java constructor goes in a Python class's init method. 
So here is our init method with four parameters. We see the parameter names for color, model, and year. But we also have this first parameter, self. In Python, any method you write must have at least one parameter. And that parameter represents the name you're going to use to refer to the calling object. Python programmers have adopted the use of the word self to represent the calling object. This is similar to Java's this keyword, only its use is required anywhere in a method that you want to refer to the calling object. When I say self.color equals color, I am defining a field, an attribute for this class called color, and I am assigning it to the value passed from the parameter for color. Self.model equals model, self.year equals year. Again, similar to a Java constructor, except with the additional first parameter, the word self, to refer to the calling object. We can access attributes directly using the dot operator. So let's suppose that I want to use this Python class. I will import car and I will create a car object. Say my car equals car dot car silver. I have a 2018 Ford Fusion. Notice that slightly different syntax. Before you use the class name when calling the constructor, you have to use the file or the module name containing that class. So my car equals car dot car silver fusion 2018. And then I could do a print statement such as print my car is, and then I can say my car dot color, for example, and it will tell me my car is silver. And we could access the other attributes in a similar way. You might notice that we haven't said anything about public or private. You'll learn later in this course that everything in Python is public. As a Java programmer, you wonder about information hiding and things like that. Python's developed a different mechanism to kind of create that hiding, which we'll see later in this course. Another interesting feature about Python is you can add attributes to an object already created. So, for example, suppose that I want to indicate that my car has four wheels. Well, I can say my car dot, and then I can give it a new field. I can say my car dot wheels, and my car has four wheels. I have now created a new field for this particular instance of car. And I can print out the number of wheels that my car has, has four wheels. This new field only applies to this particular object. If I create a new object, so let me create an object for my wife's pickup truck. She has a red Chevy S10 from 2000. But then if I want to print out its value of the attribute wheels, we'll get an error message telling us that the car object has no attribute wheels. That was a special feature that we added to that first my car object. In your next lesson, we will continue looking at attributes, specifically class attributes in Python. In Java, we use the keyword static to indicate a class field. So this statement placed with the other field definitions would create a class field with a value of four called wheels. And this would be the same value shared by any instance of the class that we create. In Python, class attributes are created by defining a variable outside of any method, usually occurring before any of the methods. 
So here in this new version of my Python class car, I have created a class attribute called wheels and I've assigned it a value of four. We don't do anything in the init method. We wouldn't do anything in the constructor for a Java class. But now this gives an attribute that all objects of class car are going to share. To see how that works, let's go ahead and create a car. And just like instance attributes, I use the dot operator to access a class attribute. So I can say print f my car has, and then I can say my car dot wheels, wheels. And my car has four wheels. If you don't have any objects created, you can refer to the class by first saying file name, module name, more appropriately. So we can say all cars have four wheels. In Python, an object can actually change its own value of a class attribute, not affecting the attributes of other objects already created or yet to be created. So let me make my pickup truck again. I have a red Chevy S10. And I can say, my pickup has my pickup dot wheels, wheels. Now let's suppose we convert this to a dually. I'm going to say my pickup dot wheels equals six. I don't recommend it, but we can reassign the value of a class attribute for a specific object. So now I can do that last print statement. My pickup has. And now it has six wheels. But my car still has four wheels. In this lesson, we learned about class attributes. In our next lesson, we'll learn how Python deals with visibility when everything in Python is public.